Welcome to New Chapter. In this series, we'll introduce you to the latest books on politics, social issues, and world affairs. I'm Derek Conway, and in this edition, we're reviewing a global bestseller, What Happened?, by Hillary Rodham Clinton. American presidential contests are brutal, lengthy, and phenomenally expensive. The 2016 campaign was notorious for the level of personal insults exchanged between winning Republican candidate Donald Trump and his Democrat Party challenger Hillary Clinton. She lost and now explains why. In this edition of New Chapter, I'll be joined by two well-informed studio guests to discuss if her book is plausible. But first, let's take a look at this brief video. Hillary Rodham Clinton former First Lady of the United States of America and Secretary of State under President Obama, combined public profile with extensive political experience to stand for president. But Democrat hopes were shredded as Republican Donald Trump launched a blizzard of personal attacks, causing his phrase, Crooked Hillary, to become the defining chant of the brutal 2016 campaign. How could Mrs. Clinton lose to a challenger who has the slightest grasp of truth and few qualities for the highest elected office? Liberals in shock. Having had time to reflect on where her campaign went wrong, Hillary Clinton's memoir, What Happened?, attempts to explain her own perspective of the campaign and is frank about her personal shortcomings. Cathartic or self-serving? New chapter examines her testament to political failure. Just how bad did this campaign get? To help us examine Mrs. Clinton's explanation, I'm joined by Carol Gould, who's an American author and filmmaker who edits the magazine Current Viewpoint. Marcel Cartier is also an American, an activist and a journalist. Welcome to you both. Now, I had to mention the fact you're American, so it justifies talking <laughs> about the American campaign. But what did you make of the book, Carl? Was, was it rightly titled or should have been titled It Was My Fault, Really? What did you think? <laughs> well, uh, through the first 120 pages or so, I kept saying, so what happened? What happened? Mm. Because she spends an inordin inordinate amount of time talking about her hairdresser, <laughs> her clothes designer. And it's interesting that the British reviewers picked out something that I picked out in the first hundred pages. She talks about going with Bill, her husband, <laughs> ex-president. Bill, 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 my beloved husband, the husband's love. And she talks about going to the home of Oscar de la Renta and his wife, and eating for a week, wonderful food, swimming, playing cards. And I thought, this is the essence of what is wrong. She still didn't get Bit it. Bit out of touch. Bit yeah. out of touch. Yeah. What do you reckon, Martha? Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think that Hillary Clinton comes across in this book as somebody who wants an immense amount of sympathy from the reader, but doesn't quite grasp at the end of the book, uh, at the end of the 450 or however many odd pages it is, that actually she was so out of touch with the American electorate that they chose to vote for somebody with no political experience who, even though he was a billionaire, came across as the anti-establishment candidate and really tapped into that feeling that something is fundamentally wrong with society. They don't trust the Democratic Party. They don't trust the Republican Party. And I think, really, Clinton, she spends an enormous amount of time blaming almost everybody except yeah. for herself. Uh, I think that she confuses the fundamental reason why she lost the election, which is really her being viewed as a representative of the establishment and a representative of Wall Street. And she confuses that with perhaps the secondary reasons, whether that's Russia's supposed meddling in the election, Julian Assange, uh, Bernie Sanders attacking her, and of course, you know, the sexism, which I'm sure she did experience and is very real. But I think that it doesn't take away from the real reason why she actually lost this election, the Democratic Party machine that she represents is not something that people trust at the end of the day. Carol, but Marcel mentions Bernie Sanders. I mean, for, before they got to the Trump-Clinton contest, the, the primaries were pretty brutal because yes. clearly the Clinton camp didn't reckon... I mean, I met Bernie, Bernie Sanders a few times and he, he was an independent senator with, with no influence that one could tell at all. Then all of a sudden he's giving the massive Clinton campaign quite a run for the mm. money. Do you think that sort of knocked her off the perch before mm. they even got out the starting mm. gate? Well, actually, he did have a considerable amount of influence in Washington because he'd been in Washington for 18 years. Yeah. Enormous respect from his colleagues, 
Republican and Democrat, and he crossed the aisle. He got on extremely well with Republicans. He could garner their interest and their support on certain issues. And Bernie had also been elected, because I had a house in Vermont. He'd been elected mayor of Burlington several times, mm -hmm. a Jewish socialist from New York, but in a fairly he conservative sat as an state. For Vermont, didn't yes. he? he wasn't a Democrat, uh, and yet a socialist. Yeah. And Vermont's a fairly conservative state, often elects Republicans. He was then a congressman, a wonderful constituency congressman. Even Republicans respected his devotion to his constituents. Yeah. And then he became senator and he was reelected. So he had a lot of influence and experience in Washington. What I found irritating in the book, even if I had been a right-wing Trumpster, is the way she, Hillary Clinton kept di dismissing Bernie throughout the book as, a, as an insurgency, an insurgency, and, and almost like a pest, like, oh, God. <laughs> How dare uh, you? Yeah, yeah. And, and she just never got the fact that there were blue-collar people who in the primaries voted for Bernie. Do, do, do you think, Marcel, that she'd just become too regal? I mean, she'd been first lady with her husband had been president. They, they loved wealth. They liked mixing with wealthy people. Had right. she just be too, become too grand? Yeah, perhaps. For... And, 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 you know, maybe she herself, you know, continues to see herself in this very progressive vein. Uh, but, you know, a lot of activists who I know in the United States were very dismissive of her, for example, saying that, okay, now I support the LGBT rights movement when she had opposed it before. Right. Or, or, you know, bringing people, mothers of those who had been killed by the police up on stage with her and saying, I support the Black Lives Matter movement when in the 90s she was referring to young black males as super predators. We'll come back to that. But yeah. here's what others say about this book. And let's also take a look at an extract from the author herself. This book is not about Hillary Clinton. Not really. It's about power. It's about what you have to believe if you believe that an adequate response to the present moment consists of trusting the experts, recalibrating the political computer, and returning the Democratic Party to power. Opponents of Clinton won't be swayed by a word of this book, and her supporters can only be disappointed. It's far more vivid than her bloodless campaigns and reveals how poorly she let them down. As for me, I'm sure I'll keep replaying in my head for a long time what went wrong in this election. As I said in my concession speech, it's going to be painful for a while. None of the factors I've discussed here lessen the responsibility I feel or the aching sense that I let everyone down. But I'm not going to sulk or despair. I'm going to do everything I can to support strong, democratic candidates everywhere. If you're reading this book, I hope you'll do your part too. Carol, I suppose whilst Mrs. Clinton sort of keeps kicking herself, and why wouldn't she? Because she must feel dreadful guilt and sadness that she didn't win. But it wasn't just her. Was it? I mean, the Democratic Party machine itself mm -hmm. seemed mm -hmm. to get it wrong, the way they were mm -hmm. treating Bernie Saunders as almost an irritant rather than a legitimate contender. Yeah. Do, do you think the Democratic Party have learnt lessons from this? Because the fear for them must be that Trump could actually be re-elected. Yes, and we have to remember, let's do some fact-checking here. Bernie Sanders won 23 states, including what was called the global primary. That's there are 8 million Americans living abroad. Half of them are Democrats, and they have a primary every four years. And Bernie Sanders won the global primary, which is uh, 60 or 70 countries, by a landslide, 70% to 30% against Hillary Clinton. He won nearly 2,000 delegates. So what I find interesting about the book is that she never quite grasps, as you say, mm -hmm. the, the rudeness, the lack of interest in anything Bernie Sanders had to offer the ticket. Mm -hmm. And Debbie Wasserman, Chairman Schultz, who was the this kind of head campaigner and the head of the Democratic Party and the this kind of the boss of the convention, who who was upsetting a lot of people. Uh, in the end, after the election, she lost her job, and and Hillary never seems to grasp that these people were were squashing away mm -hmm. an element that was very powerful. Bernie Sanders winning nearly half the country. Mm -hmm 
in the primaries was a very important issue. Do and I know Marcel that maybe she should have just following on from Carol saying maybe should have had Bernie as the her vice presidential yeah. candidate. Would that have made a difference to the campaign? I maybe? think it would have made a substantial difference, and you know her policies, like I alluded to, would have moved substantially to the left. Now you have a situation where the Democratic Party looks unable to learn any lessons from yeah. Yeah. this election. I mean, there was the possibility that this uh, young dynamic uh, man, Keith Ellison, perhaps could have become the chair of the Democratic National Committee, and the DNC chose instead to go with a more Clinton-esque figure instead. Uh, so it seems as if young people in particular are not interested in joining the so-called Democratic resistance, or Hillary now is billing herself as, you know, being part of the resistance to Trump. Young people don't see it that way. Young people are not joining the Democratic Party. Young people are more interested in alternative parties, third parties, joining perhaps socialist parties, uh, more in line with the Bernie Sanders vision of a, a social democratic kind of fair yeah. America. You know, ideas which in Europe actually don't seem all that radical, yeah. but in the United States are quite radical. Things like universal health care, education, um, people are looking for an alternative. And I think the Democrats, they, they really haven't learned any lessons from this election. And from a British perspective, you just can't imagine how yeah. someone of Donald Trump's mercurial personality could survive at the top of policy. It's unthinkable in, in a British context. And yet in America, it seems to be sort of puttling along and may even be puttling yes. along for eight years rather than four. There is a just statistic out there that suggests that 33% of Sanders supporters, and remember, he was a socialist and much to the left of Hillary Clinton, voted for Trump out of sheer spite because they were so angry at the Democratic yeah. National Committee. Which is a very divisive Hillary candidate. Do you, th do you think that they'll get it right next time? I mean, you know, maybe it was yeah. time for a woman, but America didn't seem ready for that. I mean, are there obvious Democrats coming forward, do you think, Marcel, that could be an effective challenger for Trump? You know, I think the main thing that we're seeing with U.S. politics, since 2011, people have been looking for alternatives. And I saw this in the Occupy Wall Street movement. This is when young people really started questioning what was happening in society, really wanting to offer or, or, or see real alternatives to the two-party system. And I think that this should really be a wake-up call both for the Republicans and for the Democrats, because Trump himself, you know, he's somebody who has, you know, gone from Democrat to independent to Republican. Mm -hmm. He really has no comprehensive, well, he has no idea of what's going on in general, but his politics are very erratic. So even he himself, of course, the Republicans view uh, his presidency as quite uh, damaging, I think, to their own establishment. Carol, are you, are you an optimist or do you just think you hold your head in horror at what goes on uh, in the Trump this presidency? Was a, this book was depressing. Near <laughs> the end, uh, I was, uh, what really got me was something that shocked me on election night, which is that Two in the morning, she sent John Podesta out yeah. to talk to this enormous crowd at the Javits Center, a convention center. And she, she actually, in the book, I thought, what is she going to say about that? Because that upset me so much. I was getting texts here in London at seven in the morning, UK time, saying, we've been sitting here and she isn't coming to see us. Mm -hmm. These are thousands of people who supported her. Mm -hmm. And he said to her, them to the crowd, go home. And she says tomorrow. in the book, <laughs> I sent John Podesta out to mm. tell them all to go home. She didn't get it, even mm. that night. You don't do that. If, if Bernie had lost, he'd have been at the Javits Center with his wife, middle of the night, and said, thank you, thank you. And I thought that was so arrogant of her. And throughout the book, she has more hairdressers and more dress designers and more managers of this and managers of her house and housekeepers than I think Her Majesty the Queen has. <laughs> that's a very interesting point to draw an end to because I'm afraid that's all we've got time for. Our aim on your chapter is to provoke thought and discussion, so I hope you agree what happened does just that. Securing the highest elected office in the world is not a task for the faint-hearted. Was Hillary Clinton just too brittle a personality to woo Americans, enabling a bombastic political novice to grab the keys to the White House? Read her book and you be the judge. My thanks to Carol and Marcel for joining us, and thank you also for being with us. If you have any comments or book recommendations, I would be very interested to hear from you. Our email is newchapter at presstv.com. Thank you for watching, and until the next episode of New Chapter, keep on reading.